Hey, good morning, everybody. Welcome to Chapel. I'm Pastor Matt. And as always, we begin Chapel in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. With me, as always, Pastor Chris. Pastor Chris, come on up. I got a super coat. Nobody's got a coat like this. Coat of many colors. It's gold. It's It's green. It's gold. That's pretty shiny. Awesome. With more than 1,400, don't touch. With more than 1,400 cubic sarcodiums on this jacket. Look how it shines. Yes, I got this for Pastor Appreciation Month. I have a coat of many colors. Wow, that's pretty cool. I I know. Did did somebody get me one too? Probably not, because this is the only coat in the entire world. Look at it shine. Yeah, it's awesome. Look at it. How come I didn't get a coat like that? You probably got some coffee or something. But I got an amazing coat of many colors. I got like a mug. You did? Well, you know what they say. Be thankful. Super coat. Man, you know what? (laughs) What? Uh, Are you sad? You know, I'll just let you do chapel today, man. You got the special coat. Yeah. I don't have the special coat. Well, all right, man. All right, man. Uh, Have have a good day. I'll see you later, I guess. Well, hey, guys. Welcome to chapel. He already began in the name of the Father, Son, and... Oh, he took all of our notes. I don't really know how to do chapel by myself. Super cool! Hey everybody, welcome to chapel. It's Pastor Chris. Together here today with my one-of-a-kind super coat. I have a question for you about identity today. Would you rather stand out? <coughs> Ouch. Or would you rather blend in? That's my question. Nobody else in the whole hey, world Hey, Pastor Chris! Has a... Guess who has a special coat? Just like yours. No, no, it's not like mine. It doesn't no. turn gold. It does not turn. It does turn gold. Only mine's red. I would say a far superior color to green. But still, now your coat is not so special. Because I have one too. You have the Pentecost edition. That's right. Yes, that's right. I have the festival edition of coats. Yeah. Well, yeah. and this so is... now, now I'm, I'm just like you. You're, you're not better than me anymore, Pastor Chris. We were just talking about identity, Pastor Matt, and whether you wanted to stand out or blend in. And yeah. now I feel like I'm kind of blending in because the guy who sold me this coat said it was one of a kind. There's nobody else in the whole world. I mean, I suppose it was a screen, you know. But I mean, bam! Look at that. It's amazing. Wow. Yeah. Well, this is terribly disappointing on a lot of different levels. For you, maybe. I feel pretty good about it. Um, well... So wait, we're talking about identity? We're talking about identity today. And And so what is it, what's what's it saying about identity? Well, there's a couple of questions that we're supposed to ask everybody to, before we even get into the lesson today. I gotcha, I gotcha. And so question number one, do you have a best friend who always copies you? No, I'm just kidding. (laughs) Did, would you rather stand out or blend in? That's question number one. Oh, okay. What about question number two? Um, so have you ever felt pressured to change who you are? Like maybe mm. somebody had a really fancy coat and you didn't have one and that made you feel bad and you felt like you needed to get a coat like that to keep up, right? So yeah. have you ever felt pressured to hide or change who you are? Question number three, have you ever felt like you aren't um, good enough? Have you ever felt like you're not good enough? Yeah, have you ever felt like you aren't good enough? Uh, And how about this one? Just on most days, do you you like who you are? Are you happy with yourself? Like most days you wake up feeling good about yourself. Yeah, do you feel good about yourself? And final question, kind of in this pre-discussion, pre-chapel lesson, uh, do you know exactly who you are? Or are you still kind of figuring it out? Like if you had to, you know, if somebody came up to you and said, hey, who are you? Uh, how would you describe yourself? Yeah. I are feel you still like, kind of figuring that out? I feel like I didn't figure that out till I was about 25. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> seriously. I, That's actually not a no, joke. No, no, yeah. no, no, I know. <laughs> but I'm saying like, and, and that kind of changes. Yeah. Like if you ask some people, do you know who you are? Or how would you describe yourself? Like, if you're a little bit older, sometimes people describe themselves by their vocation or their job. Yeah. Maybe some people describe themselves by physical or character traits. Yeah. So just curious, how 
you know, who do and you And sometimes choose? it's even physically how you picture yourself, right. how you want to present yourself right. to the world. That can change. Like right now, we just did chapel and I was dressed as Moses. Right. I'm sweaty. Yeah. And now, now we're wearing these fancy, super hot super coats. Fancy coats. Yes. Yeah. yeah right. Super hot coats. Yeah. So why don't we take a moment? Yeah. Pause we'll, the video. We'll pause the video. Pause the video and uh, discuss these questions for about five minutes yeah. or so. Yeah. And then uh, come on, join us back. Okay. <laughs> that was a quick five minutes. And we're back. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, we have some Bible stories that uh, kind of fit with what we're talking about today. And actually one that, uh, you know, um, obviously, so you guys are a little older. We, we don't have to pander to you quite as, as much. But we uh, will. We, we, I mean, we will. But we chose these coats for a reason. Not just that we have them. And actually, we, we both think they're hilarious. We love yeah. them. We don't uh, really think they're super cool. Right. But uh, there is a story about a fancy coat in Scripture. A coat of many colors. Yeah, Pastor it Matt. was from Joseph. <laughs> and so in the Old Testament, this is in the last couple chapters of Genesis, uh, there's a guy named Joseph, and he is his father's favorite. How much would that stink, actually? Yeah. Like, I don't know how many of you have siblings, but, like, if your parents, if your father yeah. said, this is my favorite, and made it, like, clear. That's right. what Jacob Like, did. it's Christmas time, yeah. and your brother or sister gets, like, an... Yeah iPhone a new 12. Xbox, yeah, yeah. and and you get like some Candy. socks, yeah, right? Right. I mean, that's what Jacob did essentially. Yeah, he never uh, got the memo as a parent that you're not supposed to show favoritism. Jacob didn't wasn't subtle about how much he favored his son Joseph. Yeah, and the turns out the brothers didn't really go for it. Though. Yeah, yeah. So like in the beginning, you know, uh, the the I was acting like I was jealous of your coat, right? You are, and because. In Jacob's case, uh, it, it, his brothers thought that, you know, Jacob felt like he was special, that Jacob felt like he was better yeah. than they were, and so they got jealous. And, you know, obviously, we're just joking around, but it is, it is, it, well, I mean, now that I have the coat, we're just joking around. Uh, but it is easy to get jealous when you think people have more than you, or right. when you think people get more recognition than you, Absolutely. or people are better liked than you. Well, and I guarantee everybody watching this video at some point has been jealous of a friend or maybe a sibling that got something that they didn't get. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. So uh, the, the brothers knew that Joseph was their dad's favorite, and so they were jealous. Uh, and then it, it got even worse because Joseph had dreams <laughs> sent by God that one day his brothers were going to bow down to him. And then he made the big mistake of actually right. telling them. That's the biggest mistake. Yeah. He told them that he had those Maybe dreams. if you have a dream from God that your brothers are going to bow down before you, you don't yeah. mention it at dinner. No, right, I right. Know. I don't know. Yeah, so the, they were jealous and they uh, were fearful and yeah. they were insecure. And so they actually planned to do something that was pretty terrible. Yeah. Uh, they, they initially planned to murder their brother Jacob. Now, I hope that we've all felt jealous. I hope none of us have ever felt that jealous that's, before. That's, that's really bad. Uh, yeah. But yeah, they, they actually planned to murder Joseph. And in the end, uh, you know, there was a, a little few other things going on with some of the brothers. But in the end, they, they decided not to kill him, which was good. Thank God for that. But they did sell him <laughs> yeah. into slavery. It was really good, but they still sold him into, threw him in a well and sold him into slavery. Right, and then they lied to their father and said that, that Joseph had And of him. course his father, Jacob, uh, was devastated at the news that his favorite son was dead. Yeah, yeah. So we might think that jealousy is kind of harmless. Like, oh, it's not a big deal. So what? I was a little jealous, you know? But it's something that we all experience, and, and the, this story of Jacob shows how, how destructive it can be if we let it get out of control. Yeah, totally. So one thing real quick, um, we've heard the story of jealousy over and over again in Scripture. Of course, Cain and Abel, um, we've got that. We've got Joseph and Joseph's brothers. Some of the first followers of Christ actually wrestled with jealousy as well. Um, and, and so... Here's what Paul, in 1 Corinthians uh, 12, chapter 12, verses 4 through 12, this is what Paul actually, he was a, we talked a little bit about him a couple of weeks ago, you know, Paul was originally Saul, and uh, then he had this confrontation that just, with Jesus that completely changed him, and uh, this is a letter that he wrote to the church in Corinth, 
So Yes, and so here's what he says to those people that were struggling with some jealousies. He says, there are different kinds of gifts, but the same spirit. There are different kinds of service, but the same Lord. There are different kinds of working, but the same God works all of them in all men. Now to each one, the manifestation of the Spirit is given for the common good. To one, there is given through the Spirit the message of wisdom. To another, the message of knowledge by means of the same Spirit. To another, faith by the same Spirit. To another, gifts of healing by that one Spirit. To another, miraculous powers. To another, prophecy. To another, distinguishing between Spirits. To another, speaking in different kinds of tongues. And to still another, the interpretation of tongues. All these are the work of one and the same Spirit, and he gives them to each one just as he determines. Mm -hmm. So this teaches us a few things about ourselves, right? Because yeah. the idea is all of us are loved by God, yet God gives us different gifts. We are, we are all unique. We are all different. Yeah. You know, like your coat is green. Totally. My coat is red, right? There's still a uniqueness there. That's right. Uh, and and God, God is with us. Yeah. So what do we learn from yeah, this? Yeah, we yeah. learned a couple points. The yeah. first one you just said God is... God is with us. In verse 4 through 6, we know that... Um, there's ooh, if one spirit dwells in us. If, if you're struggling what your identity is as a Christian, we know that God is with us. Right. And the other thing we learn from this uh, listing of different gifts is that you have a purpose. Right. And part of your purpose is to let God use you for the good of others. That's why one person has one gift, another person has a different gift, because you each can have different purposes, but you both use them to help others. And the other side, like our jackets are different, your gifts are actually unique to you. How boring would it be if God created everybody with the exact same gifts? And that's why some people are, are gifted and are very creative. Some people are musical. I can't play a guitar, but Matt is, Pastor Matt's great. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah. I can't plan an event like you. You know, so I, yeah. that's what makes the world great is that we both have unique gifts. And that's the beauty of the church when people come together with all their unique gifts to glorify God and to serve other people. And that means that God didn't make a mistake when he made you. Never. God made you on purpose. Correct. And he made you with a purpose. Yeah. He made you unique and he made you with a purpose. Yeah. And so your identity isn't really just about you, um, but it's found in community with others. Right. Like, I wouldn't know some of my giftedness if I wasn't with other people in God's community trying to serve other people. Yeah. You know? Um, that people, there's some people that have this amazing gift of hospitality. Like, they're just really good at hosting stuff and encouraging, but they wouldn't be able to, to know if they had that gift or not if there wasn't other people in the community. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So I think the final lesson is this. Don't be jealous. Don't hate. And why? Because you were created by a God who is good, and you are known and carefully designed by your Creator who is always with you. Right. And we can trust how God has made us. Yeah. So, yeah, with that being said, uh, I hope this was helpful. I know identity is super tough when you're in middle school and high school. Yeah. As, and, and one of the big things is you, you compare yourself to other people, and that's, like, not the answer. Don't compare yourself to anyone. Know that God made you unique. And that he loves you and he's with you. Amen. Yeah. Well, let's pray and then we'll let you guys go. Yeah. Father, we thank you for making each one of us unique. We thank you for giving us each different gifts. Lord, help us to appreciate those gifts and that uniqueness you have given us, Lord. Remove jealousy and, and hatred and division from our hearts. Uh, and let us just appreciate who you made us to be and who you made others to be. And this we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We end chapel. In the same way we begin. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Take care, everybody. God bless.